You screw up more than you used to. I get that comment from time to time and uh, it is actually true because before kids I would take a lot more time to make sure I got things right. But a bigger difference is I realized I enjoy watching other people deal with their screw ups so why not show some of mine and I'm not so insecure anymore to uh, try to hide them so it's like yeah I messed up it's okay I'm not super right on everything. But I still don't show all of my screw-ups because some screw-ups just aren't that interesting and also if I showed all of them that would just stretch out the video far too much. Now I used to think of my videos as more instructional and in that regard you want to show how to do it right not how to screw it up. But I've realized most of my audience is just armchair woodworkers and people watching it for entertainment. So now I think of my videos as woodworking entertainment and for that, screw-ups, well, they just add to the entertainment, even if it's just schadenfreude. Still fun to watch. I mean, you know, think of going to a show and somebody trips, uh, that's always entertaining, isn't it? So having gotten that out of the way, let's talk about screw-ups on this dresser, because I screwed up a lot more than I showed in the video. The problem with finishing up this dresser is it's getting too close to Christmas and I only have a few days left that I can still work before Christmas and I wanted to varnish this one at the same time as a Christmas present and so I just had the attitude of just get her done, damn it. But when I showed this one to Rachel, she thought it was beautiful because I didn't tell her about the screw-ups. Some of the screw-ups just come from trying out different things. So what I hadn't tried before is to just put a plywood panel between two solid members and not going into any sort of slot, just butt joint against there and joined with a few uh, floating tenons and that worked out fairly well. Uh, what really helped is to drop the plywood down a little bit because when you're trying to sand this or something like that you can sand this all you want but the plywood, the veneer is really thin and then when I did the sides I actually inset this quite a bit further which I should have done that on the top too because that makes this sort of a natural edge here and that really helps to hide if there's a gap because if you look right here there's actually a bit of a gap here but because it's in this corner it's less obvious and the reason that I've got some gaps is because basically I cut these to the same width and I made sure the frames are flat but any sort of error in flatness of these two frames results in a gap here because I have no means to adjust it there's no slack or anything but it worked out okay. Oh, well on here actually the gap is a bit bigger. I glued the front on first because I wanted to avoid the gap in the front more than the back. I had a few gaps in the box joints because I didn't cut these to be super tight just to make it easier to assemble them and I used my usual technique of glue and sawdust to add retroactive precision but uh, this gap you can still see. I guess I missed that and then towards the bottom I wasn't as careful about that in fact, you can see there's still a bit of glue on there. I just didn't even clean that up. But it's not something you notice unless you're looking for it. Uh, another screw up is that I glued the veneer on one of the drawer fronts backwards and I just couldn't fix that. People suggested I should just cut the drawer front off and glue it on the other way around. Or maybe cut the veneer off and put it on there. But the problem is this veneer is actually backwards front to back. So I really would have had to resaw the veneer off of it and glue it back on. And it's too thin for that, it just wouldn't work. But it turns out with this veneer on backwards, that gets a lot of pedantic people really worked up. So I'm actually pretty happy it's on there backwards now because now it actually serves a purpose. Take that, you pedantic folks. I also screwed up when I resawed that veneer. If you look right here, it is maybe a millimeter and a half, whereas if we go way over here, it's easily four or five millimeters. Because what happened is the direction that my resaw blade wanted to cut was actually a little bit more out of the cut and I could counteract that by pressing tightly against the fence but I wasn't doing that consistently and so there's a few places where the uh, blade really drifted partly out of the cut and made the veneer really thin which is one of the reasons I had to go over the jointer between cuts. But as a result uh, the veneers on these aren't actually entirely flat uh, and I used less glossy varnish but in the right kind of light, or shall we say the wrong kind of light, you can clearly see they're not entirely flat. But I was pretty happy to get five matching uh, drawer fronts out of that one piece of wood that I resawed, except of course one is on backwards. Now this trim that goes around the edge around the drawers, I really think it helps the look of it, but I screwed that up too. I uh, joined that frame together before gluing it on, but that was a mistake because that meant I had to get all four edges lined up at the same time 
and as a result I wasn't as careful as I should have been so these don't all line up super flush here the uh, oak protrudes a little bit beyond the uh, the 2 by 4 material um, on this side uh, I actually had yeah here it protrudes quite a bit and then it's here this part protrudes and then on the bottom side this bottom is actually bowed down a little bit and I had just clamped it when I noticed it but uh, I was trying to uh, take off the clamps and move it a bit, but by that time that glue had already set up real good, so it just wouldn't budge. But fortunately, it doesn't really jump out at me, so it's not too bad. I was quite deliberate about making the gaps between the drawers a bit bigger than on the last one I built. That way, if one of these drawers is off by a millimeter, it won't be that glaringly obvious. It would still show up a bit, but not too, too bad. Now a suggestion that comes up quite often is that I should use some glue that uh, has a longer working time. But what makes the glue dry so fast sometimes is basically once the moisture is out of it, it's set. And if I squeeze those pieces together and most of the glue gets squeezed out, I've got like maybe a thousandth of an inch of glue in there. And that moisture gets wicked out really fast and at that point it's set. So I don't see how any sort of nice water-based glue can avoid drying in that sort of circumstance. Yeah, if I use some slow set epoxy, but I don't like using epoxy. It's messy, it's expensive, and if I get it on my clothes, they're ruined. Whereas the wood glue, I get it on my clothes all the time, and you know, it just comes out in a wash much better than epoxy. And another screw up, when I glued the bottom on the drawers, the bottom edge of this didn't fully lined up, so you see there's a gap here, which I could have squished that on there a bit more to join more. But that sort of screw up is not the least bit interesting, so I don't include that sort of thing in a video. Another criticism, why no jump test for this one? Well, the thing is, I actually assembled it on a really flimsy sort of dolly, which doesn't have very strong wheels, so I didn't want to jump on that, but let's fix that. Are you happy now? And since this video is more of a rambling, talking sort of video, here's what I got on the bench right now. So I took apart one of these Flexfold battery packs. Um, it was kind of a fail, but I filmed it, so I think I'll publish it anyways. That'll go on my Random Stuff channel, because it's not woodworking. And then I was playing around with optics. Uh, if I make a video about that, that'll be in January. I ordered materials for that, so I'll probably make a video on it. And then playing around with these blowers, that'll actually be a woodworking project, and hopefully I'll still publish that this year. And I've really been enjoying these projects that are more experiments, uh, less woodworking. Because in those projects, I learned something too, and that just makes it more interesting to me. I think that's what makes uh, Dustin from Smart Every Day's videos so compelling, because he's always learning something new and sharing it. Whereas <laughs> a lot of the stuff he's learning, I'd be like, yeah, it works this way, duh. But that would make a really shitty video that nobody would want to watch. So when you learn something new yourself, it just makes a much better video. And that's what my Matthias Random Stuff channel is mostly about, which is a different channel from the channel that this video is on.